This is Common Core State Standard Support video in mathematics. The standard is 2NBTB5. This standard states fluently add and subtract within 100 using strategies based on place value, properties of operations, and or the relationship between addition and subtraction. Now, what's nice about this standard is that there's other standards that focus on addition and subtraction, and we can address those simultaneously. Back in first grade, there was standard 1NBTC4 that focused on adding within 100 uh, with the focus on using concrete models. Then in the same grade level, there's standard 2NBTB7 that deals with adding and subtracting within 1,000 and also concentrating on concrete models. Also within second grade, we have standard 2NBTB6 that talks about adding up to four two-digit numbers. Standard 2NBTB9 that deals with students explaining why uh, these strategies work. We have standard 3NBTA2 which deals with fluently adding and subtracting within a thousand. And then we also have at the next grade level, grade four, standard 4NBTB4 four that concentrates on fluently adding and subtracting multi-digit whole numbers. Now if we look at the standard back in the first grade, 1NBTC4. That one uh, lays the foundation for this standard that we're dealing with now. And then we have standard 2NBTB7 that actually parallels standard 1NBTC4 uh, with only a couple of uh, distinctions between them. Standard 1 focused primarily on adding within 100, uh, whereas when you go up to the grade level 2, uh, standard NBTB7 uh, takes it up to within 1,000 and also throws in subtraction. Looking at the next grade level, grade 3, this standard 3NBTA2 is actually a direct uh, result of this standard 2NBT5, but it takes it up a notch as far as place value to within 1,000 instead of within 100. And then we go on to standard 4NBTB4, which is pretty much the culmination of adding and subtracting with whole numbers. Again, when we address 2NBTB5, we're also addressing 2NBTB6 and 2NBTB9. Now, let's look at these a little bit closer. Notice that the idea between this standard is fluently adding and subtracting. Whereas back with the first grade foundation, uh, 1NBTC4, uh, the focus was on concrete models or drawings. So this idea of fluently implies an expectation of adding and subtracting with speed and accuracy without the aid of concrete or visual aids. Now let's look at this statement toward the end of standard 1 NBTC4. Understand that in adding two digit numbers one adds tens and tens, ones and ones. With that emphasis what we're really doing is laying this key foundation that only like items can be combined. Very very important property. So for example, let's say we have 4 plus 5 equals 9. There is an implied understanding that we have to have something, for example, like 4 dogs plus 5 dogs is 9 dogs. But even without context, something like 3 plus 7 is equal to 10 would be understood to be 3 ones plus 7 ones is 10 ones. Again, all the same like items, even though there wasn't a context. Now let's look at this last phrase. Sometimes it is necessary to compose a 10. So what this uh, emphasizes is the idea of place value. Uh, so that's a second critical foundation for the fundamental understanding that is needed for 2NBTB5. Again, this idea of place value is very important, but in particular, the key idea is that place determines value. So where each digit is located determines what it's worth. So let's look a little closer at place value. If we have something like 27 plus 35, there's an understanding, okay, that we have two tens and then seven ones, and we're going to add 35, and that is composed of three tens and five ones. So what we did back in first grade when we were doing concrete models, uh, we're going to combine our tens and we're going to combine our ones. Now with place value, what's going to happen is that we only have two slots, two positions to put our solution. 
because again, uh, each place value is determined by and represented by one digit. So we have a little bit of a problem here because 7 plus 5 is 12. So what we're going to have to do is take 10 of the 1's and convert them to 1 10. And so this is our result. So now our 1 10 can be combined with the other 5 to give us our 6 10's and 2 1's, which of course is understood to be 62 1's. But this standard pushes the idea of fluently adding and subtracting. So if we go back and approach the same problem, what students are expected to do now is something like this, but students still understand mentally that this is what's really happening, that we have 12, which is where our 1 comes from, that's our 10, and of course the 2 in the 1's place. Then we can go on and finish uh, out the problem, add our 1 and 2 and 3 to be 6. And of course those are 10's, and we have our final solution of 62. Now let's look at a subtraction example. Let's say we have 43 and we're going to subtract 28. Back in first grade, with the focus on concrete models, this is what we would have had, four tens, and then three ones. And we're supposed to take away eight ones from the three ones, but we don't have enough. We can't take eight ones from three ones here. So what we have to do is convert one of our tens to ten ones. And this is actually our result. We have converted the 43 to 3 tens and 13 ones, so now it is possible to do the subtraction. We take away 3 and 5 more, so we've taken away our ones. So 13, we take away 8, that's 5. And then we have to subtract our tens, we have to subtract two of them. And here's what we have left, so we have 1 10 to go with the five ones. And of course, this is understood to be 15 ones for our final solution. But this standard, again, focuses on doing this fluently and really mentally. So when students do this, mentally, though, they do understand what happens, that uh, we have converted, again, the 43 to three tens and 13 ones, and now we can continue on and solve it. Uh, do the computation, 8 ones from 13 ones is 5 ones, and then 2 tens from 3 ones gives us 1 ten for our final solution of 15, which of course is understood to be 15 ones. Now let's focus on properties of operations. At this level, we're pretty much going to utilize the community property of addition and the associated property of addition. So the commutative property of addition says that I can take the two numbers that I'm adding and change the order, and I still get the same result. And students are used to working a lot with just single digit numbers. Now we have them do something like this, 52 plus 34, and they get their solution. And then we have them do the, the same problem with the order switched. They'll still get the same solution, so they'll see that hey, the commutative property works. It doesn't make any difference what the size of the numbers are. It's still going to work. The associative property of addition deals with changing the grouping. So without any parentheses, it's understood that something like 9 plus 3 plus 7, the 9 and the 3 constitute the first group. But here, notice that, well, hey, it'd be easier to add 3 and 7. That's nice and easy. That's a 10. So I'd rather regroup this uh, with the 3 and the 7 first. So in essence, what we've done here is change the grouping, and that is our associated property. Let's say we have this problem to begin with, 3 plus 9 plus 7. And we notice, hey, you know, 3 and 7, that's 10. That's a lot easier. I want to group those together first. So we need to apply our commutative property of addition and change the order of the 9 and the 7. So we do that. And in essence, when we did that, we're also now going to apply the associative property because when we change the order, we did change the order from 3 plus 9 initially for our first edition to where uh, the situation now we'd have 3 plus 7 instead. Let's look at a second example where we combine the properties. Again, we notice that, hey, 12 and uh, 38, that'd be a little bit easier because I'm going to end up with a multiple of 10. 
So we use our commutative property and switch the order of the 23 and the 38. And again, uh, now we have the associative property because we did regroup. Instead of 12 plus 23 initially, we have 12 plus 38. Looking at our properties one more time, let's say we have 29 plus 38. Now what we can also do is uh, combine that with the idea of place value, where we break those down, the 29 to 20 plus 9, the 38 to 30 plus 8, and then typically, hey, we want to add our tens together. So I want to change the order around. So I need to change these two, the 9 and the 30. And now this is the result. So now I can combine 20 and 30. That's 50 plus 9. That's 59. Uh, so we have that. Now this might pose a little bit of a problem. Uh, this type of example might be problematic for some students. So let's do this. Let's change the order. Let's use our commutative property. And now, let's look at the 59. Let's use the relationship between addition and subtraction. Now, 59 is pretty close to 60, so we can change the 59 to 60 minus 1. Now, for a lot of students, this would be an easier problem to solve, an easier computation where we just add the 8 and the 60 to be 68, and then simply subtract 1 to get our final answer of 67. Most of you probably know from experience that a problem like this, you know, 80 minus 34, can be a real headache for students. There's just something about having to decompose, but having a zero uh, as our ones place. So why don't we do something like this? Uh, we can break down the 80 to 79 plus 1. And now when we subtract 34, there's no need for any more composing or decomposing. Uh, so we can simply subtract and we get 45 but of course don't forget the one and we get our final uh, solution of 46. We can add a little bit more value to this standard uh, because what we can do is lay the foundation for the additive identity and of course the additive identity simply says that uh, for example if we add 2 and subtract 2 that's 0 so that doesn't result in any change to the original quantity. However, at this level, we need to limit this to addition context because if you try to do this with subtraction, it will really get confusing. So let's say we have 48 plus 26. And let's throw in another example, 50 plus 24. Now when students do the actual addition, we get 74 for our first solution, but we also get 74 for our second solution. Now why is this? What, what did we do? Why did that work out that way? Well, notice that to get from 48 to 50, I would add 2, and to change 26 to 24, I would subtract 2. Notice that we added 2 and subtracted 2 for a net change of 0. If we do this with concrete examples, this is all we did. We took two ones over here uh, with the 26, and we just move them over and give them to the 48. So in essence, again, this is what we did. We added 2 to the 48, and we got 50, and we subtracted 2 from the 26, and we got 24. Let's say you have this combination, 24 plus 37, and students solve it and get their solution. Then you give them this second example, 21 plus 40, and guess what? They're going to get the same solution. What actually happened here? Well, to go from 24 to 21, we have to subtract 3, but to keep this equivalent, we'll have to add 3 to the 37, but that makes it a nice 40, which will be a nice number to be adding. Let's try this again. Now this becomes 20 plus 41. What happened here? Well, let's see, we have to subtract 4 from the 24, but then we'll have to also add 4 to the 37, and again, we get 20 plus 41, where one of the numbers is a multiple of 10, and it makes it uh, easier to add. One more time, let's see, one more example. Let's say we end up with 30 plus 31. How do we do this? Ah, we added 6 to the 24, and then we subtract 6 from the 37 for a net change of 0, which gives us a 30 plus 31, which gives us our same solution of 61 that we would have gotten back with 24 plus 37. By doing exercises like this, we're actually going back and reinforcing standard 10AC6. 
which states add and subtract within 20, demonstrating fluency for adding and subtracting within 10. So again, we're doing a lot of this. We're doing a lot of adding and subtracting within 10. Now we're also helping with standard 2AB.2 that states fluently add and subtract within 20 using mental strategies. And so again, this will give them a lot of practice with that standard also. If we look at the uh, practice standards, the standards for mathematical practice, uh, if we look at the first four, uh, one could argue that we've addressed number two and number three, where they, the students are reasoning abstractly and quantitatively, and the expectation uh, on number three would be that they are constructing viable arguments and critiquing the reasoning of others. And then when we look at the last four, we are definitely looking for an expression regularity and repeated reasoning. Students start to see some of the patterns and some of the strategies that we utilize to address standard 2NVT B5.